There we are. Major major malfunction. That's okay. We got it covered. Hey, welcome to the Al's Nest Barbecue Show. Steve Ray coming to you live from the attic here at Al's Nest Barbecue headquarters. Uh, we are brought to you by all the great rubs and sauces at the Al's Nest Barbecue Supply Store and Pro Shop in Ottawa, Tennessee. All these guys, all these guys are bringing you this show. Support them. If you're not close to me, go online and buy their products. If they're in a store by you, go in there and buy their products. All these guys. They're great. Great guys. Our broadcast partners, Backyard Barbecue Smokers, on Facebook, plus an array of great Facebook friends that watch and share our show nightly. And we appreciate them very, very much. And back at his house, Jeff Maxwell of Smoke and Goat Barbecue Team. He is manning the chat room. So get in there and make some comments. We've got a great guest. We're going to tell you about him here in just a second or two. I uh, want to remind everybody that our buddy uh, Ken Smith over in Nashville, our um, Owl's Nest Barbecue Nashville Stringer, has a podcast out. It's called Faces to Places. It's up and running. And episode three is now available. The episode is from Del Rose, Tennessee, where Ken spoke with Jack Bennett. I know I think he's a bladesmith or a knife maker, something like that. Um, Ken's uh, first two episodes are great. Um, really, a really unique guy, and he brings a unique perspective. Faces to places, wherever you get your podcast. Also, all of the Al's Dance Barbecue shows are available on podcast as well. Through Spotify, but you can get them anywhere you get your podcast. So if you miss a show or if you want to listen to it again, no time to watch, call it up on podcast. It's right there. Also, I want to thank um, Jonathan, Tanya, and Silas Edwards. You ever heard of them? Better known as Bowling Smoke Barbecue Team from Tate, Tennessee. They stopped by today and they stocked up on some rubs and supplies. And thanks to them for making the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply and Pro Shop a stop on their way from Taft, Tennessee to the Smoky Mountains. Appreciate that, guys. And if you're in our area, we're located in Old Wall, Tennessee. That's exit 11 off of I-75. We're, we're on the east side of the interstate. And I, I swear I can hit, I can hit, I can still hit a pitching wedge from my front door and hit it onto the interstate. I'm that close. So stop by and see us. Um, I've got a big, big, big announcement I want to I tell you guys about. Um, on November the 7th, I want that camera switch. I don't know what's going on with this thing. Slow tonight. On November the 7th, in just a few weeks, we're going to have the Smoking Barbecue Day at the Owl's Nest Barbecue and Pro Shop in Old Tawa, Tennessee. And it's going to be a, a, a big a big kickoff for the uh, holiday season. I've got um, Robert and Lex Vanderripe coming up from Smoke Me Silly. Uh, they are currently 10th in the Kansas City Barbecue uh, Team of the Year race. They were going to be with us tonight for a few minutes. But we're moving them to next Thursday night so we can spend more time with them. And I want to spend more time with our guests tonight. So they will be on next uh, next Thursday with us. Also, uh, coming up with them is Trey and Meg Terry from Sweet from Smoke and Sweet Meats Barbecue Team. Uh, they're going to do a pork butt demonstration. I'm going to get Robert and Lex to do a brisket demonstration. Uh, Sean Cosby, our own local uh, barbecue whiz kid and now steak cook-off association contest winner he's going to be with us to do a um, a steak demonstration and the big the biggest news of who's going to be here is is and everybody around here knows him big ed kaler is going to be live at my gas station can you believe it i can't big ed kaler the national touring comedian from right here in ultawa is going to do a show at one o'clock live at my um, Al's Desk Barbecue Supply and Pro Shop and the Midnight Oil Gas Station. We'll have all the chairs, a little stage set up for Big Ed. 
and that's going to be huge. So a full fun day, that market calendar is November the 7th. If you're within an hour or even two hours of Ottawa, drive, make it, make it a time to come down that day, and uh, we'll have special pricing on all the products. The store is stocked to the, it's, we're bulging, we're, we're bulging at the seams, and we'll have uh, special prices, and of course, we'll have all the complete uh, Green Mountain grills, we'll have all them built and ready to go, so if you want to come in and and get a few lessons, um, uh, maybe a cook and a turkey real quick. We can, we can help you do that. Uh, the Green Mountain Grill, great for doing smoked turkeys. All right. There you go. November the 7th. November the 7th. Mark your calendars. Okay. Robert, Vander, Robert and Lex. Meg, Meg and um, Trey. Sean Cosby. And Big Ed Kaler. All live. At the Osnes Barbecue Show, Barbecue Show, the Osnes Barbecue Supply Store and Pro Shop in Ottawa. Now, now, let's get down to it. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 listen to you, listen to you. You guys recognize this guy, James <laughs> James Grubbs from Blairsville, Georgia. One of the contestants on the American Barbecue Showdown. James, welcome to the show, man. Man, I really appreciate you having me. I, I'm looking I can't forward believe you're to it. I, I can't believe you would be on this little show as, as big a, a big as a personality as you become. Oh, come on now, man. I'm still <laughs> just an old country boy from back in the woods, you know. I like to keep it simple. You know, when we talk to our guests, um, I always like to talk about famous people from where they're from. And I, I, I tell you, man, it's a struggle. <laughs> Blair's, Blairsville, Georgia was a struggle, James, about trying to find some uh, famous people. You're it. You're it now. You're at the yeah, top of the Wikipedia we list. Win, we had a guy win a season of a loan from up here. R who was that? Alan. I can't remember his last name, but cause, I mean, <laughs> but he's from here. He runs a survival school up here. Well, that's and a good he place won, for I don't know what season it was, but it's probably about five or seven years ago. He won – alone or survival mm -hmm. or one of those uh well you you've replaced him now as the most famous i don't know about all that man there, there's a guy i couldn't remember his name i can't remember his name but i read about him he he was a a caucasian male that was the first now this is how bizarre it gets he was the first caucasian male that attended an all african-american university and lettered at the university. He was the only Caucasian on the football team. He is from Blairsville. Blairsville. So, yeah, um, Blairsville, it's a small town, man. I mean, the county's a big place, but Blairsville itself is a small town. I, I actually live near North Carolina, man, up in the count, north end of the county instead of the town of Blairsville, but we all get the Blairsville address to yeah. everybody that lives in the county because, you know. Well, but yeah, it's a small town, man. It really is, but I love it. I love it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Blairsville, Georgia, the town of the town motto is, they'll never find us up here, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's where Grubbacue became Grubbacue's Blairsville, Georgia, man. Yeah, I, I believe it a lot. There's, a, you, know? Um, you know, Dahlonega, your neighbor in Georgia, like you right. said, right over the line, is known as the first, uh, first, let's see, first gold mining town in America. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. The, the purest gold is in Union County. Yeah. And they people find it in the creeks and stuff around here now. Yep. I mean, it's it's crazy, but they do, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. and uh, I know a lot of people they dredge for gold and stuff. A pound of they got little jars and stuff, and they find it in the dang creeks and stuff around here. It's yep. it's a it's a really nice place to live, man. You know, and even that ride between Blairsville and Udawa, that's just between the Koi Gorge and all that. Oh, that's yeah. all. It's beautiful, man. Well, uh, I live where I do. I mean, I'm from Louisiana. It's hot. It's swampy. It's nasty. Well, this is man, I'm spoiled. I I don't know if I could move to the city again, to be honest with you. For all you hikers and naturalists out there, the Appalachian Trail goes right past uh, Grubb's yeah. house. Well, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Smell the barbecue and have him wolfing in by yeah. the back porch all of a sudden. So if you're ever hiking the smoke on the cartoon, grab him by the nose and pull him in, you know. So if you're ever hiking the eighteen, you go, honey, I smell I smell possum. That's <laughs> that's grubs. He's up there just cooking away. <laughs> Yeah, but we fed it acorns and stuff first, so I mean yeah. that was good. You know, oh, there, was I've good. got—I know there's no doubt your your methodology. We're gonna we're gonna get to it. So we, we, now we just covered. My first question was, 
What's it like living in the middle of nowhere? I love it, man. I absolutely love it. I mean, to go anywhere is 15, 20 miles, no doubt. And that's okay. I mean, I mean, I'll give you an example. I was at the corner store up the road there about five miles, and the guy said he's got a big sandwich he's all proud of. He said, you know, some dude told me he drove 15 miles to get sandwich. I said, man, you got to drive 15 miles to get anything up here. Today. <laughs> now, if he said he drove 50 miles to get the sandwich, I might be impressed. But yeah, 15. 15. Yeah. That's, that's you do nothing. everything, you know, you do everything at the same time when you go to town. You know, you go to the dump, you go to the doctor's appointment, you move your appointments when you go to town because it's like, I just soon stay out here in the woods, man, to be honest with you, you know. Oh, it's, <laughs> well, you're, you're, the background of your front porch there is, is beautiful. The, the, the leaves are turning already, and it's uh, it, it's, yeah, it's I know a wonderful. They're falling thing. off the trees already. No, yeah. serious, serious talk. Yeah, you're you're located right in the middle of the Chattahoochee Forest, and mm -hmm. uh, I mean it it is beautiful country that north that part of North Georgia. It's special. It hey, um, man, you, you did great. You did great on the American Barbecue Showdown. You were obviously one of the, uh, if not, if not the top show favorite, you were the next to the top show favorite. Uh, well, I appreciate that. When you man. talk, when you talk with everybody, how did the producers uh, contact you? First of all, well, I actually had put in for a television show, a cooking show. I've been doing, trying to get on these things for a couple of years, man. Yeah. I mean, I was an alternate with Miss Tina on American Grill and Travel Channel, so that kind of got the bug. I got the bug on that, and then my cone holders that were on a, that were actually on the show, were actually on a television show called Hatched like a Shark Tank thing about four or five years ago. And I just got the bug. I kept trying to get on a cooking show and trying and trying. And finally, I put an application for another network, and the, that casting person sent me the link to apply for this show. Oh, okay. And uh, so I applied for it. You, mm -hmm. know? you know, let's do a Skype interview. Meet me. Let's talk about it, you know. Absolutely. Did you realize, did, did you realize that you were one of 1,500 um, possible contestants that made that show? I I do now. I mean, after we got down there and realized there was over 1,200, I know. Most people don't realize. I went down as an alternate. Oh, really? I, they called me on Thursday. said, look, Drugs, man, you're an alternate, but we're going to give you some money. Come down here, do your thing, and get on the show. Mm -hmm. And when I got down there, honestly, there was 10 competitors on Saturday. When we filmed, there was eight. That's right, see? That's a little back news. I can't be saying no names or nothing, but I'm telling you, so there was alternates besides who they had wanted for the cast down there to start with. Okay. And I was one of them. He told me, the executive producer said, Grubbs, man, you're an alternate still. He said, but we love your personality, man. Come down here and do what you do. And they came up and picked me up and drove me down there. And I interviewed and I did Grubbs, man. And wow. I got on the damn show. So yeah. the other two, without mentioning any names, I know you can't do that, but did they have uh, conflicts? Did they it just not work I out? Don't, I don't know. I uh -huh. don't know why. I mean, the producers picked who they picked. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And I don't even know if the, I don't know how much the judges were involved. I know there was the culinary producers were involved and the show producers were involved yeah. in making the final decision. Well, it's for, first and foremost the show business, and they want the eight. They want the eight best there, and and you are obviously the one of the eight best there. Well, so. I was humbled. As, I'll be honest with you, dude. I, when I showed up down there and I saw Miss Tina. And I saw Miss Sylvie, and I saw Ash, and I seen these guys. I've been following the barbecue circuit around this for years, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Damn, I can't even believe, man!" I was humbled as hell to even be included with these guys to start with, you know. So, so that was I, I was as your first reaction was like, "I can't believe I'm in with these guys." Yeah, one hundred percent. It's like, damn, I you know what it was. And every night I'd get through an episode, I'd call my wife up and Joyce, and I ain't coming home yet. You know? <laughs> I'm still here. Can you believe that? Well, you know, you mentioned American Grilled. Uh, real quick, tell us what that experience was like. That was from 2015, and uh, Tina won that uh, right. game show as well. And uh, right. there were a lot of big names on on that show too. Tell tell me about that uh, experience. Well, I, I went there. There's five of us, and so four made the, the show. It was mm -hmm. Tina, Jack Waybar, Lee Cheeks, and Cheyenne Ledyard, which uh -huh. he just opened up Ledyard Barbecue out in South Carolina where he lives and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they actually made the show. And I believe it was a, it was a one-time, one-day filming. You know, dude, it was like boom, boom, boom compared to what this was. I don't know, you know, I don't know the difference between Travel Channel and Netflix or trying to be conflicting on that, but Netflix went all out on this one. Oh, this we're going to talk, we're gonna talk about compared that. Compared yeah. to what the other one was, it was uh -huh. like, damn. But, you know, I still got to watch, and I stayed uh, for, like, the first challenge mm -hmm. they had on that show. Yeah. So I just watched and just kind of took it in because, man, I, 
no, I don't know if I'd have made it on that show or not. And I went down there as an author. They said, well, we'll give you a little bit of money. Come down here. You never know something might happen. And boom, you know, you'd be on the show. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I was betting on myself to roll down there and do it, you know. Yeah. And, uh, Jack Waybore could have got his beard, got the lawnmower or something. Could have been, <laughs> could have been terrible. <laughs> I think he finished second to Miss Tina, if I'm not mistaken. He's a that. he's a good guy. Yeah. I've, I've got to meet him and talk with him a few times. He's a, he's a really neat fellow. Um Tell me, you 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 segued right into my next question. Tell me about the farm, the Enchanting Farm, and the crew that it took to put on the American Barbecue Showdown. I can't even, man. I can't even explain it. It was it was massive. I mean, it really was massive. And when we went down to the set the first day before any filming started, and just did a little walkthrough, show where the pantries were and how things were going to be. It was like, holy crap, man! I mean, there there had to be two hundred people on set. I mean, mm -hmm. between medics and catering and lights and sound and, you know, the what I call them the gate watchers, but they call themselves cash wranglers, I think is what their official, everybody's an associate producer, so, but I think they were the cash wranglers and they, like, they kept us, you know, you couldn't go hardly nowhere without them, you know, you, when we were in a little tent between and you might have to go to the john or something, you had to, like, get down to walk with you even, you know. If really? <laughs> If you wanted something to eat, though, man, you call up 10 o'clock and they'd be hanging out down the lobby and said, man, I need a hamburger. They go get you a hamburger. Wow. You know, it was, it was crazy, man. It was uh, <laughs> it was wild. I'm going to be honest with you. I went down as an alternate. I'm going to tell you this. This is a little story real quick. I'll tell you. I mean, I really thought I was going to go down there for like four days, you know, make a little bit of money, come back to Georgia, up here in North Georgia, sling some groceries over to the grocery store. That's what I was doing part time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't even bring enough money. Man, I had to wash my underwear on Wednesday because I was still there. I ain't, I didn't have enough drawers, clean drawers to get through. You know, I was like, damn, I can't believe I'm still here. It was, yeah. It was like, I, it was, it was, it was, I had the best time of my life, man. I really Look did. You. And that I knew going down to an alternate, you know, I said, well, I'm going to have fun. That's mm -hmm. what I'm going to do. Let's go down here. Let's have some fun. And so my whole mindset doing this thing was I'm going to have fun no matter what happens because I was just so humbled to be there. It was it was awesome. Well, well, it was obvious that of, of all, uh, I'd say that the two people that were the funniest was you as shotgun. <laughs> now, now that shotgun, he you he, know, he, he was gone up to the first show, but he was, he was very entertaining. You got it. You got to admit yeah, that. Yeah. He was very entertaining individual. We still he, keep in touch now. All of us do. Yeah. He was hilarious. The way he mm -hmm. talks and rhymes and, and talks and rap and, and, Right, it looked like it was right off the top of his head. I don't think that was scripted. No, he talks like that now. If you talk to him, message him back and forth, he talks the same way. Uh, well, that, well, he was great. He was great. Yeah. So, um, so you're they down there. Were, everybody was all. It was awesome to meet it. That's all barbecue family to me now. Everybody that was there. Hey, what was the, what was the shooting schedule like? What um, because you were there a long time, and um, well, so what? Give, give me the day in the life of of uh, Grubs on the set of American Barbecue Showdown. Well, there's always, it seemed like you were always there forever, but the time, the times they gave you on the show were real times. When they said it's time to cook and you got five and a half hours, you got five and a half hours. But we would be there sometimes two hours prior just to get mic'd up, have breakfast, whatever, mm -hmm. before that even you got to that point. And you'd get there and you wouldn't know what cookers you had to use, but your little station would have cookers maybe you ain't ever seen because there's something I ain't never cooked on in my life over. I ain't, at that point, I'd never, ever used a pellet grill or an ugly drum or a vortex cooker ever in my mm -hmm. life. So yeah. when you'd see that, and they wouldn't tell you until they, what they told you was going to cook, what you had to cook on. So you when you have maybe 30 or 40 minutes before that happened, and to get your fires lit, and the best thing you could do, just light them all. Whether you knew what you were doing or not, just light them all, because you might need that cooker, and you didn't know. You know, and it was, it was long days, man. And when they were chasing daylight because it, it stretched on or a thunderstorm would come out, it would be like, wow, man. But, I mean, we were in there from anywhere from 10 to 17. That one, I think it was 16 or 17 hours one night. Wow. And that may have been the picnic night. Mm -hmm. and, you know, because the judging and all had to take place, and then the storms came in. It was, it was crazy, man. You know, you was intense. There's no doubt about it. It was intense as could be. That, that whole show, it was so much fun to me. But in the end, it was like intense just because of the time. And, you know, you would shoot one day. The next day, we wouldn't shoot. And then after, I think, I don't remember what episode, they gave us an extra day off because they just want everybody to kind of decompress a little bit, you know. But you would shoot, and then you would do interviews about the shoot you did yesterday. And that would be the interview you saw us talking in during the episode, you know. Yeah. Well, you could tell we were cleaner, too. I mean, because we sweated. It was... 
It well, hot, cooking, cooking barbecue, you'll sweat in the wintertime. You brought up a, you brought up a point I wanted to ask you about. Uh, you had an ugly drum, you had a, a, a Traeger pellet smoker, uh, a Lang offset, and a Vortex, right? And a green egg. Uh, yeah, and a green egg. Did did they say you've got to cook this on these? On so, they? Yeah, time, yeah, some of them were. You had to use this. You oh, had okay. To use this. Okay. You know, and you didn't know going into it because you'd walk out there and, like, even the day we cooked on an open fire, you know, the, one, the stew and the pot, you didn't know, but there was a fire. You always had a fire pit. Mm -hmm. but then all of a sudden, you had to use that fire pit. Yeah. In the challenge. Mm hmm. You know, so the best thing, like I say, the best thing you could do is just go light all the fires. Because if you know, looking at looking at the shows and, and kind of looking at what people are cooking, I personally would have I said I'm gonna I would have used that trigger on everything because that's like using an, an oven in your kitchen. But it wasn't you know? there every episode. Yeah, see, I didn't know that. So, mm -hmm. so they made you use they 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 mixed up the things you had to cook on because well, obviously there, every episode was the green egg. That was there every episode. Yeah, because obviously the the hardest for somebody that doesn't do barbecue every day, and, and Georgia Chasen was a good example, just based on what I saw on the show, was the laying offset. Mm -hmm. You know, for somebody, for a novice in barbecue, I mean, that that would be a tough, tough vessel to use. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. And it's from an inexperience, because the more you do barbecue, to me, I'm at the point where it doesn't matter what I cook on, because right. I cook to an internal temperature. I know what it's got to be. And if it, some, I would love for my heat source to be part of my recipe, but they may not always be the choice you get. Right. Just depending on what you're cooking on, but that's how I, I, I go into it, you know. So it doesn't matter the vessel to me, because I'm going to do fire maintenance. I'm going to know how to control my fire. And that's why, even though I've never used a lang in my life, I got a different kind of reverse flow smoker. But it ain't nothing like the lane. They don't run the same. The green egg, I've had a green egg for 20 years, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, and I got a kettle and I got an electric cook shack smoker. So I, I had, I've used different kind of cookers a lot. Right. But I had never, ever used a Vortex. I'd never used an ugly drum. I'd never pellet grill because I'm, I'm <laughs> it was funny because I turned it on. I knew we were going to have to go hot and fast because the times things they gave us. So I'm setting mine up at like 325. Yeah, I was going to say. Coming out, not knowing anything about a pellet grill. No, so, so I put it on smoke thinking it'll do that at the same time. No, Tim's went way down to 180. I'm yeah. like, oh, shit, that ain't going to work. You know? no. so, yeah. <laughs> but I got a pellet grill now, and, I, man, I love it. I ain't going to lie to you. I bought one in March, and I bet you I've run 400 pounds of pellets through that thing since March. I think my, my egg's a little jealous, but it's, I, like, I like the way it works. Man. Oh, they're, 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 they're great. Like, they're great. You know, and, you know, you see what I'm saying? If you could have used that Traeger, I'd have thrown, I'd have thrown everything in that Traeger just because mm -hmm. I knew, you know, you, you, don't, you can just set, the, you set it and forget it. You could have done your sides. Right, right. And, and that sort of thing, not have to worry about it. But you couldn't do we that. Didn't have our, we didn't have our phones, and there was no timers on the wall. So you were, you know, when they said you had so many hours, man, I would try to, like, set the clock on the oven, you know, even if I didn't have the oven on, mm -hmm. I would set the clock to give myself enough time and could then reset it if I had to because you just never knew what to do. If you had more fires that you could do to set it and forget it, then that would be one less thing you got to worry about back here when you're right. in the barn doing whatever you had to do or, because it was a lot of running back and forth too, man. Between the cook, cook stations, it was it was well, a lot of running back and forth. I heard, I heard when I when I talked with Georgia and Tina, they were both really impressed with the uh, pantry. Were you? Oh yeah, especially if I'm gonna be from my point of view. But my pockets ain't deep like that. Okay, yeah. I mean that's how I roll. But I'm talking about the best cuts of. I ain't never cooked no Wagyu beef in my life, no Duroc pork, never in my life. I, ain't, mm -hmm. right. I get my stuff in the local Ingles, maybe, you know, yeah. save a lot if it's on sale or something. And uh, so I was in, and everything you wanted because, and they asked you, I mean, they said, look, what, is there anything you see, you don't see in the pantry that you think you might need, you know? So you tell them and then boom, it'd be there, you know? So they were trying to but get they, anything to make you successful. Yeah, exactly. And the same way going into it, man, you knew, see, we went through a arduous, man, I mean, rigorous audition process, okay, with videos and pictures, and mm -hmm. they sent a guy from a, a pit master to my house l last year to come taste my barbecue. Really? Yeah. Wow. And you had to, they'd tell you, send you a menu, and you had to take pictures and do videos, and they would tell you certain things to cook when you did this. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, if they're asking you to do this now, and you make the show chances are they're going to ask you to do that same thing on the show mm -hmm. you know it, it, it basically it worked out like that yeah i mean maybe I, the exact same thing because we knew they asked a lot about doing wild game and stuff hell i live in the woods i cook wild game but none, not some of the stuff they threw that 
threw at me over there, you know, yeah. but still it's wild gang, you know, I mean, you're making quick breads and things like this. They ask you to do this stuff. So you got to think in the back of your brain, that maybe you're going to have to do this if you make it on the show, you know? Well, sure. All right, let's get to the episodes, man. Um, <laughs> you were the, you were the perennial almost loser for four, for four episodes. And that, that was hilarious. And, uh, well, no, not the second episode, I wasn't in the bottom two then. I, I know. I know, but what, what I was, the, it, it's funny, you know, we were watching with friends and I said, I said, I said, this guy, bless his heart. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's always, he's, he's always almost gone, but he just, he's just hanging in there like a hair on a biscuit, buddy. He just won't leave. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, um, shotgun gets, uh, he gets the boot episode one, uh, boat, right. Hits the boot in the big, um, cooking for the, um, the uh july 4th picnic what what was that what was that like that was wild because see when we went to our cookers we knew we were going to be cooking a certain protein uh -huh. and see they and one thing they didn't show in there was when they did the uh we all had to get together and come up with the rest of the menu to feed these guys mm -hmm. so it's like you know we got a big board or cardboard and georgia got a pen okay you do this you do that you do this you do that we all talked about it amongst ourselves came up with the menu besides the proteins they had gave us like i think i got a I think a cobbler, because there's a picture of my blueberry cobbler, because I actually made a homemade whipped cream with strawberry yogurt in it to help hold it up. Mm -hmm. It was like a strawberry whipped cream on the blueberry cobbler. And that never came up, as I don't think, on the episode that I remember seeing, but I, other than a picture of it. Right. You know? And because uh, we ended up doing, it was a full menu deal to feed those guys, man. And uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. Who, who, were, who were all those people? EMS and paramedics from the county that mm -hmm. we were in. You know, they were oh, okay. all fire. I guess uh, ambulance workers, paramedics, yeah, things. Yeah, they were all first responders in the county that we were at. I, I, whatever Covington, I don't know the name of the county down there, but was that a was it's, the the farm was is called uh, I think it's called in Channing because it's on Channing Road in Covington, Georgia. Uh, was it a pretty nice place? It was awesome, man. Where? <laughs> it was. I mean, it, to me, I mean, I'm. I grew up in the city and stuff, but I've lived in the country so long. I mean, it was awesome because it was such a big, elaborate thing they put together. When I yeah. walked through that park that first time and I saw all those cookers lined up, they didn't have the station built, but you see all these lanes, you see all these green eggs stacked up. You see, it's like, oh, you know, it was like Disney World for barbecuers, man. I mean, <laughs> anything you could want to do down there, they had. Yeah. I mean, from cooking to food, anything that if you, that you want to do, it was there. All right, episode three. Now, you, you know, I call this the weird episode. Um, uh, Georgia and um, uh, Tina, uh, they said it wasn't weird. It was they, they were glad that they threw that in, that nobody got the boot. Were you, that was the episode, episode three, of course, is uh, when y'all cooked, y'all gathered. And I think you were one of the, you and Miss Sylvie, right? Right. The, uh, yeah, me and Miss yeah. Sylvie. I think Tina won, big surprise, and you and Sylvie were the, at the bottom of the list. And mm -hmm. we're, tell me about your reaction when they came in and said, nobody's going home. Did you know you that know, was it coming? Was like, it, was, it was, yeah, it was like winning a damn $10 scratch off or something. Uh -huh. It's like, holy cow, you know what I'm saying? It's like, and we look at it, that, what you saw the reaction from me and Miss Sylvie yeah. was real, man. I mean, oh, I, that, I was, agree. that was a spontaneous, that wasn't a do over, you know, because some scenes you had to film two or three times, but a lot of the, camaraderie so to speak was natural and they caught that a lot on the show which was really cool you know but that was real man i mean because i'll tell you i love me some miss sylvie she's like a barbecue og man oh you know she's and, unbelievable yeah she's, she, yeah she's awesome yeah and uh the, the look they, they did a, a picture of you i saw it somewhere you and um georgia when they announced that and both of y'all's faces and and mouths were like i mean you you couldn't have been happier you know, you, well, you could have been happy. It's like it was the same thing. They don't even realize that that Tuesday or Monday morning before we went to film the next day, and we were down in the bottom, you know, waiting in the lobby to go to the set, and we were all down there. And they said, "Hey, they all load up." And I said, "Well, so and so ain't here yet. So and so ain't here yet." You know, and they said, "Oh no, y'all are the eight contestants." It was like. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know? I was I was like, "Damn, all right." You, you know? made the, you made the cut. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I really was. That's that's why I went into the whole thing to have fun because I didn't know how long I'd be on there. And actually, when I when the when my when I left the show, it was almost like, 
man, I tell you, that was a damn ride, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's the same thing. The same thing Georgia, Georgia said. It was almost really real quick. Um, I know that I, I want to focus on you, but what did you, what did you, what did you think when you found out that uh, Georgia Chasen was uh, expecting on the show? Oh, yeah. See, we knew before her husband. <laughs> How funny. Yeah. We, yeah, we all sitting around there when she told us, and it was like, I mean, it was all exciting, you know. I mean, of uh -huh. course it was. I'm going to tell you, we all became pretty close on the show because, I mean, we spent a lot of time together and in adverse conditions, you know, so that tends to make you bond a little bit better, you know. Oh, I think and, it's uh, obvious, y'all. You can't fake. Uh, you can't fake closest, and I think it, was, I think it showed in every episode. Yeah, it was awesome. Really that's what I'm saying. We got barbecue family because of that now. I mean, always will. You know, I've been asked to go cook with some of these guys. We all, everybody stays in touch with each other. It's, you know, if you got a mm -hmm. question, I got a question about a spice. I'm going to tell you, a fan sent me a book on jerk marinades. Okay. Mm -hmm. A fan. So I got it. And I was, because I was like, well, man, I'm reading this recipe. I said, well, let me ask Rashid, you know. So I messaged Rashid just to make sure, you know, what uh -huh. he would think about this recipe. But now I did some chicken my, wings. My wife loved them, man. You know, oh, that sounds good. All right, yeah. episode four, Georgia gets shown the door. Um, That's the sandwich tournament. Yeah, the, the sandwich yeah. deal. Um, you again, you were <laughs> you and you were <laughs> the, just a, and, and you know usually when um, uh, yeah I think that's when um, uh, Melissa said just a little bit more. Because usually when she says little bit more, it means you're you're getting shown the door, pal. <laughs> I thought well, I said, there, man, just being uh, in the bottom is like holy crap, you know. And you, you didn't, you, I mean, you didn't know. Yeah, but but it, it was hilarious. So you kept ending up there, but that you kept, but you kept hanging on. So so there goes Georgia. And then here we go, episode five. Now I'm going to tell you, when episode five came on, we watched the first four the first day with some friends, and the next four I was watching it with just my family. And when I saw what you had to cook, I told him, I said. I said, that guy is not going to be in the final two. I said, this guy probably did those for lunch before he got there. <laughs> all those crazy possum and squirrels and iguanas and all, all the critters. I said, this I, guy knows how to do these things. I know, but the thing is with that, too, you didn't know what you were going to get wild game-wise. And right. I've never personally cooked those two meats myself. Right. And one had to be stewed and one had to be grilled. Mm-hmm. That was how it had to be. So, so you had dude, you had possum man. and you had possum and what else? And bison. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super you, lean pink meat, man. Yeah. You know. Um, not not and a whole. In hindsight, I'd have done something totally different, but you know that's another. Story. Yeah. <laughs> no, you got to add the flavor to bison too. It's kind of like it's kind of like the chicken of beef. Um, yeah. So it's so pure. Uh, and lean that it doesn't it, it doesn't have a whole lot of taste to it without. I mean, the if fat it's farm raised bison, it doesn't even have a bit of gaminess to it that you would distinct right. it, make it as a you know right. some wild animal that people like that taste to it. But a farm raised bison, I'm assuming all the animals were farm raised because they I would they would have to be USDA inspected before we cooked them. But the possum, you know, I got they, they didn't show you all this, but see the possum when I looked at that possum dude. On that on that platter, I'm seeing these this critter dark meat and ain't got no feet or no head on it. And I'm saying to myself, man, y'all, <laughs> where I come from, you got to at least leave the feet on it so I know it's a possum. It might be a damn house cat y'all gave me or something, you know? <laughs> no, it's possum grubs. I said, okay. Okay, I believe you. That's, that's how you present it where I come from. At least the head, skin out, or feet or something on it so you know it's a possum, you know? Yeah. Well, it, it looked like a house cat to me, I mean. Well, I mean, who, who sees a possum? <laughs> you know they're usually squished on the side of the road. That's all you ever see them. So um, you, you 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 muddled through there, and um, you and Ashley are 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 in the bottom two right there. And um, I really I really thought um, I really thought Ashley was going to get the boot on that one. I, I thought that your yours might be a little bit stronger. I thought maybe they took into account uh, possums kind of hard to do. Uh, and you know I love I love when um, Melissa and Kevin are, are critiquing your possum, like oh we eat this all the time and you should have put a little more. <laughs> you know that was they they really do a good job of you know we have no idea what we're eating because we've never eaten it this. It was either. actually good though, man. It really was. I, the possum with the sweet potato gravy was pretty damn tasty. I mean, pretty tasty. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, 
more so than some of the others, in my opinion, you know, mm-hmm. but we tasted our, each other's food. So, so there you are, you and Ash sitting there and, and Ash was, uh, he turned out to be the silent, uh, kind of the silent hero of the mm-hmm. uh, series. I think he, uh, he flew under the radar the whole, the whole time up until that point. Cause that was the first time I believe he was in the, in the bottom two and you're the veteran, you know, I got this, you're just another guy. I got to, you know, step over to, uh, to, to keep going on. And, um, what was your feeling standing there? Or first of all, let me, let me back up. What, after you turned your, after your, after they said time's up and you took your food to the people, right? Right. How long, how long did it take Melissa and Kevin to judge the food? And what did y'all do quote in the meantime? It, it was an hour or two hours sometimes. Really? It was. And see, when you got your place done, the two, two things that had to happen right when the food was fresh. They want to taste the food fresh, mm-hmm. first of all. So don't sit around. Right. Culinary would take one of your plates to make it look all pretty for the pictures. Mm-hmm. And then the other place, you went right to the judges, and they would sit there and taste and eat. And, I mean, we don't know because we were exited to the competitor tent on the other side of the complex. We weren't even be allowed to be around there. Mm-hmm. So you, and you don't know if producers were tasting it. You don't know who all was involved because in, in every, the producers have say so in it too, along with the judges. Right. I mean, they're making a television show. Mm-hmm. So I don't know who tasted what they, but they judge it. And I know Rut and Lyric both took, and I don't know how much of their input was involved, but they all, we always made enough food for them too. Right. You know, so, and they would sit down as far as I'm, what I'm thinking in my head is they would amongst the four of them discuss it, but it was more on Melissa and, and Kevin, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, it would be an hour, hour and a half sometimes. That's why I'm saying people don't realize the time links they gave us to cook were real. But you spent a lot more time than that on set every day. From like yeah. 6 in the morning to 6 at night. To, one night it was like 10, 11 o'clock before we got in. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, it was, I think it was 16 or 17 hours. It was long, man. And I and, guess you've yeah. got probably an early wake up the next day too. Well, yeah, well, not as early. If, when we did interviews the next day, you maybe go in at eight instead of six, you mm-hmm. know, something like that. It was a little less because the interviews wouldn't take as long. And as of course we got less people, it took even less time. Yeah. You know, um, interview less people. Real quick. People are, people are wondering in the chat. Uh, tell, tell us your take on the uh, same clothes deal. Everybody wanted the same clothes. Everybody wants oh, to know man. that. Everybody always wants I know, to know that. Well, look, I, I mean, I had no problem with it. They dressed us like they wanted to dress us. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, they came by your room when you got there that Saturday with the little wardrobe girls with some clothes hanging on the things. They put this on, took a picture, sent it to the producers, and you change it. And they say, okay, that's your look. Boom. So they'd give you a set of fresh clothes. You went down the set, did your thing, sweaty, nasty. Mm-hmm. Come back to the hotel, take them off. They, an hour later, be knock on the door. Hey, Grubs, got you some fresh clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was it every day. And I mean, I see the reason what we heard about the reason for at the time was like, well, people binge watch, right. you know, and they want to be able to keep up with their favorite person, mm-hmm. you know, easily recognizable. But in the hindsight, you also see this part of editing because, I mean, it just, I don't know if I said something in episode one, they clipped out and used in episode four. I ain't got a clue, man. I look just the same I'm saying, you know, yeah, right. you know, they told you not to shave your beard or trim your hair or do nothing that you didn't have. When you got there, when they said, okay, this is what you're going to look like. That's what you look like. Was the so, was the do rag was the do rag your idea or was that their idea? Well, I in the summertime I wear those up here cooking because uh-huh. it's a sweat thing and you know, I ain't yeah. got much hair, you know, as right. it is. But uh, and I, they wouldn't let me wear my LSU hat on set, so right. I went with the purple do rag. Oh, okay, that was the only part of the wardrobe I provided were were the do rag. Did, did you have to use the same do rag or did they get some? No, of them? I had ten. Or Okay. All right. So, so you were you were ready in that respect. Well, that's good. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything was fresh, man. All right. You and you and Ash are standing there. You and Ash are standing there in episode five, um, and he he looked nervous. And I mean, I don't think you can, I don't think you can fake those. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but it looked like those were pretty realistic when y'all were standing there. Am I right on that? Yeah, one hundred percent. So he looked a little scared. You looked like another day at the office. Give me, give me what you got, Melissa and Kevin. What? Tell me about how you were feeling at that point. Well, I really, I really didn't know. I mean, in all honesty, 
I was just impressed to be there every day that I was there. I mean, I like literally, I'd come home and call my wife from the hotel and I said, you ain't gonna believe this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't coming home yet, you know? Because <laughs> I mean, I was just amazed at how good a cook these people were, okay? First of all, they were all excellent cooks. And I knew in my mind, this ain't a Mr. America contest. This is a damn cooking competition, mm -hmm. you know? So personality is one thing, but if you can't throw some groceries on the plate that's going to make them happy, you ain't going to win. That's right. all there is to it. Right. Because it's good competition. They're not going to keep you around because you're funny. No. No, they're not. And I didn't get on the show because I'm funny. You know, I got on the show because I'm funny and I can cook. You can, you're, you, you got know? a talent. Absolutely. And uh, I've been doing it a long time, Steve. I mean, I really have. And I, to me, it's a bucket list thing for me. You know, I'm like, I'm so happy that I even got this opportunity. The, do the opportunities have come from being on the show. I can't even explain. To oh, you, absolutely. It's crazy. it's crazy. Well, it's it hung around the top 10 for, I think, what, the first three weeks it was out. Yeah, I think it made all the way to top four or something. Yeah, I mean, millions and out. millions of people are watching that thing. And, you know, Grubbs, they did it. I'm a big fan of barbecue television. I watch, I watch them. If it's on, I'll watch it. I don't care who does it. You know, I'll right. watch it. And uh, But it, the, the one that, that you were in, uh, the camera work, the angles, the equipment that y'all had to cook on, um, I, I think it was I think it was fantastic, and you could tell it was a pretty high budget uh, production. It was top of the line, everything, man. They did had damn drones flying around, videotaping, and I mean, literally. And I'm gonna tell you one of the hardest things for me, and people don't realize it because they don't see it as much. You see, I just got here in age about two or three months ago. I'm a mm -hmm. machinist by trade, retired. And I could not hear them people on set, man. It drove me freaking crazy. When I'm over here cooking, doing anything, and they got the people behind the cameras, they're trying to, like, feed you questions or, you know, let you know what's going on. I'd have to stop and say, man, y'all got to repeat yourself, you know, or speak up or something, you know? Yeah. So, to, but I got hearing aids now, and it's everything's a world better. But that was, to me, from the most difficult. Wasn't the heat. I've lost, I had lost a lot of weight going into that show, man. I was healthy as it could be going Yeah, I, I, wanna, I wanna talk about that, too, in just a second. But, but tell right. me about the hearing aids and the and the uh, the trouble hearing them. That, that had to be it's frustrating. I know it I was, go through the that, same thing. I re that's when I really realized, man, I got to get some dang hearing aids. I mean, really? you know, I mean, I realized it and never doing that show. And you know what? Because I had the opportunity to do this, I may get the opportunity to do it again. And I don't want to be in that same position. Right. That I was to do that. You might you be know? doing. You might be doing bell tone ads. Yeah, you might be the spokesman for Belltone. Hey, Grubbs here. Exactly, Monica Olivio, you know, but that's okay. I'll do them too, you know. Grub, Grubbs here. What'd you say? It I can hear you now. You know, it really makes a big difference. But I'm going to tell you, the scary part about the hearing aids for me, see, I work part-time two days a week slinging health and beauty aids at the local Ingles up here. Uh-huh. And, uh, man, when I walked in the store with them hearing aids on, it was like, <laughs> I can hear every squeaky wheel two miles over. I mean, people, man, oh, Lord have mercy. It's like, whoo. But I really appreciate it now, though, you know. Well, sure you do. Was, uh, Let's talk, <laughs> talk about the uh, the health issue that you had uh, prior to the show. And because yeah. um, you 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 weren't always the the uh, the mean, the mean, skinny bean that you are right now, were you? I weigh two, man, two, two and a half years ago, I weighed 230 pounds. Uh -huh. Okay. I weigh about 180 now. Yeah. And uh yeah, and that's just, you know, like the doctor told me for years, man, it's lip service for a man. He don't pay no attention. You, just because you cook it all don't mean you got to eat it all, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they always hear, don't trust a skinny barbecue, you know. But I tell you, man, I am I am walking living fruits. I grill all, I bet I grill three, four days a week. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can eat good. It's all about moderation. And I tr truly believe, and, I, you know, I know some people are funny like that, but you cut down your salt, you cut down on your fat, and everything else in moderation. And get you got to get some exercise. As simple as that. I tried it, man. I quit drinking beer, I, and I couldn't get past that twenty-five pound hump. I just couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I started walking. Yep. And you know, I was what I call a grubbo diet. Okay, I'm gonna put this word out for anybody who wants to try it. It's easy. Half your diet has to be fruits and vegetables. Half your diet, and okay. the other half lean proteins. And that's all. Cut back on the butter a little bit. Cut back on the salt a little bit. You know, if people use spicy seasoning as opposed to salt it'll do the same thing on your tongue it'll open it up to taste the rest of what you got to taste mm -hmm. with your food you doesn't have to be salt and we all know you can't go without salt and sugar in this world unless you're going to eat grass like a cow basically it's in everything right so it has to it has to be in moderation you really need to just be in, it's in moderation everything in moderation i 
Man, I still like jalapeno poppers. I eat pork rib. Hell, I'll fry a pork rib, but need I'm just not going to eat a half a slab of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when did when did you have when did you have your heart attack and how bad was it? It was a M1, I think is what they call it, MI1 or something. Mm -hmm. But it was June. It was June 10th of 2018. Mm -hmm. And see, I had back surgery a week before that because I had neuro stem implants. A lot of people don't know this. I was on pain management for 16 years. Uh -huh. So, but I've been opiate free now since 2014 uh -huh. so people they want to say yeah see they don't know that about me i was yeah. on that stuff for 16 years and i had a machine in my back and all this other garbage and enough was enough i had it removed and a week later i had a heart attack good grief yeah so you're so, laid up you're laid up and laid up again well I, yeah but i just had to I had to deal with it man i mean yeah. i mean i'm a young fella i just turned 59 years old you know mm -hmm. and i got a lot to do and it's just a matter of changing your lifestyle. And it's hard for guys. I know it is, man. I'm I'm living it. But it's hard. It ain't easy to do. But it's rewarding when you do do it. I'm two and a half years post heart attack and I'm still down forty five to fifty pounds. That's great. You know. That's great. And I still barbecue all the time. All mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, like I say you, you just cook it all to me and you have to eat it all. That's exactly. Good for you. Exactly. And everything in moderation. Moderation, you know. You know, that would have been and I know you touched on that during the show, but um that would have been that would have been a good inspirational segment, you know. I, mm -hmm. I think because I mean it, it's a uh, it inspired me to stay healthy, you know. Because I ain't, I still got a daughter. I'm gonna have to walk down the aisle one of these days. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I want to be there. You know, I got yeah. another grandbaby due next year in March. You know, I want to be there. So yeah. it's a uh, you my, know, I, I, my, uh, I got something to do, man. My cooking team partner, he uh, man, he he went into cardiac arrest. They had to bring him back on the floor of the emergency room. And he's about, uh, about your age. And uh, he it's, did, You know, it's a wake up, up call is what it is. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, you know, when that hits you and it's like, dang, you know, they, they, I had to take a helicopter from Union County down to Gainesville, Georgia, to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, they catheterized me and blah, blah, blah. But three or four days, they said it was what it was. And it's just uh, grubs. You got to change what you're doing. So, yeah. So, so how did they treat they just Did they just go in and put in some stents that was an open heart surgery? Yeah. They couldn't do the stint because of where it was located. Uh-huh. But she says, because uh, I asked the doctor that just a couple months ago. I said, if I still got a 100% blockage in it, what makes you think I ain't going to have another damn heart attack? I mean, I don't want to live like this. Don't worry about it. She says, the heart will take care of that. You know, just keep yourself healthy. Keep your cholesterol right. Keep doing what you're doing. You know. Good. And she asked me. She says, well, gross. She says, you know, most people after a heart attack, you'll lose 10 or 15 pounds for the first three to six months. And then next thing you know, a year later, it's all back. She says, well, what motivates you? I say, hell, I don't want to die. Yeah. It's pretty simple, you know. I mean, I, Outlaw I Josie Wells said it best: "Don ain't much of a living." <laughs> no, you hell, know. I had a TV show to do. I got stuff that's going right. on, man. <laughs> I'm a TV star, buddy. <laughs> that, that, that's great. That's great. All right, so um, you got the boot. Um, I thought your uh, goodbye speech was was wonderful. You said, "I'm all right with that." I can't, I can't believe I made it this far. It's been gravy since episode two. Um, that's the way I took it. Is that the way you meant it? Oh yeah, one hundred percent, man. It to me that was one of the biggest highlights of my life being on that show. It truly was. I mean, oh, that's I, in I all honesty. That. I'm not. I'm not blowing smoke up nobody's skirt at all. I mean, I told them, dude, the birth of my oldest son. We adopted two babies from Russia. Marrying my wife, and this. That's the five top things in my life, man. That I can always relate to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a tattoo of it on my dang arm, you know. Yeah. So it's a. Uh, I like. Yeah, it's, I like it. it. Great, great experience, man. Great experience. I'd recommend anybody do it. I'm going to be honest with you. If they do a season two, we know filming slowed down for right now. I'm sure we'll get casting information. I'll share it with anybody that wants to get up and give it a go, man. I, and I would encourage anybody. But be sure when you when you decide you want to do it, you better be all in because it ain't no game, man. It's it's hard to get on it. And once you get there, it ain't easy to hang around. Yeah. And once you they know, get you into it, I mean, you're there for a long time, weren't you? You were there what? How many days? I was there... 12 days. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, a lot of people can't get off work 12 days. So if you're, right. if, if you want to jump. you can't be telling everybody where you're going either. They don't, you, it's all kind of secret, secret, you know, other than your spouse and all, you can't just be telling that, well, I'm going to go film this cooking show. So, so it was all told, keep everything on the low. Well, you know, you know, when I, when I found you and contacted you before it came out, you were like, uh, hold on now. Hold on. You know, you were kind of nervous. It's like I caught the spy. And, uh, well, that, well, they, 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 they reiterated the fact that we needed to just chill with yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, I mean, and they kept it tight to the vest, man. We would, 
the year before the show aired that time you would really you didn't hear nothing for six months i mean literally you didn't hear nothing from anybody and uh we, we were all on the like what's coming up on netflix like scanning it for september october looking for the show you know <laughs> maybe it's coming up maybe it's coming up then all of a sudden about three weeks out they let us know but then we can't say anything until the national release by et online because i guess they got the exclusive uh -huh. and then after that we were told what we could do mm -hmm. they got we couldn't say nothing until then we didn't even know they changed the name until we got that email two weeks before because that was the name of the show was different going in it had a word really? battle was totally different oh yeah oh can you say what it was well i, 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 don't, uh, know. If you, I don't know if you can, uh, can i can't let me see if you can see that tattoo. I can't. Let's see. Smoked. Yeah. Smoked. I'm just saying this. And then you see the ABS around the smoke. American Barbecue Showdown. I just got that done. Oh. Good guy, but. Well, there, you know, there was, there was a show called Smoke. Exactly. And I yeah. think there were some trademark issues. Yeah. There. That was a uh, that was a, a Myron Nixon uh, type deal. Exactly. Smoked. It was a good show. It was a good show. Too. Destination America. Yeah. It, did, it didn't last very long, but it was a. Right. One season. Yeah. 2016. Mm-hmm. But, um, but that was the working title. That was a working title. Oh, okay. I mean, well, that makes sense. That, yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying it because you know. Uh, no, it's, it's, I like American Barbecue Showdown better. I like this. I like time because we really never had time to smoke a lot of stuff, man. It was barbecue more than smoking at all. I mean, five to six hours. Yeah. Every yeah. Challenge, yeah. You wouldn't. That's why I do my chicken, the signature chicken they want me to do. Talking about doing it in five. Hell, that takes me a day and a half to do chicken because I brine all my chicken. That's yeah. just the way it is, you know? Yeah. Well, you gotta, you just gotta, you know, whatever they tell you, you just gotta say, well, this is the way we gotta do it. If you're gonna, yeah. if you're gonna compete and somebody like Tina, who, who, who plays the, oh gosh, darn, I don't know if I can do this. You know, she's got it, you know, she's got it in the back of her head, like a computer. You know, she knew exactly what to do. And, uh, you know, I called it when we were watching with our buddies. I, I called it that day when I first saw her on the show. I said, there's your winner right there. I said, there's no way she can lose. And I didn't think, I didn't think Rashid was going to make it when they said he was just uh, kind of like the backyard. You know, they played him up as the backyard. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Just starting out guy. And, uh, but you could tell he was, uh, I bet he seems to be a really smart individual. Extremely. Yeah. I mean, extremely he's smart and a hell of a cook. Yeah. That no kidding. Dude, that dude, yeah. No, he's Uber. Rashid is straight up, man. He is, uh, he's just like they say on the show. I mean, the gentle giant, you know, because he's a big dude, man. He's oh, like yeah. six, seven. I know. know. Yeah. I think he and, played it. Uh, I think he, he played at UGA. He, he's uber smart, man. The dude's uber smart. He really mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Well, he, he was, y'all are all great. I mean, from, from, from the uh, you know what it was? shotgun, yeah, all of them, boat ride, everybody was great. Yeah, but but you know what they and I gave it to the, the producers too because they managed to put eight of us together that were all different people and kept us you know cohesiveness about the whole thing mm -hmm. and but they were the, the the way they put the group together they put together was just because that day that man I was telling them people the other two people that were with us we were all walking to do some interviews and stuff I said look man we're all here for a reason okay go in there and knock your socks off but we're all here for a reason. We wouldn't yeah. be here. There was over 1,200 people that we had heard when we got down there that had put in for the show. Mm -hmm. And here we are, 10 of us. We're here for a reason. Yeah, you had something that those producers knew would play well on television. And each 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 of the contestants brought something to that show, I thought. There was nobody there that I said, though, they could have done without. Even even um, the two, uh, the host and the hostess. Lyric mm -hmm. and um, uh, right. what, was that, what was that other fellow's name? Right, right, right. right. I, did, I didn't know him. Um, I didn't realize how popular he was on television. Um, but I thought he was, I thought he did a great job. And I thought Lyric did a good job. I liked the way they kind of, you know, they kind of were the, the liaison between Melissa and Kevin and you guys. And right, uh, right. I, I got I got no problem with them on the show. I thought they And they great. strolled around and tasted our food. So people don't realize they didn't see a lot of that. But they, you know, you saw a lot of Kevin and Melissa coming up while we were in the barn and we were cooking. But uh, Rutt and Lyric came around too, yeah. you know, and taste. You know, he got samples. I mean, I think I, I think some his, his kids might have got a sample of something we was cooking one day. You know, mm -hmm. just uh, I'm looking here, taste this, you know, and blah blah blah, whatever it was. So, uh, well, tell me about was, tell me about the um, tell me about the, the the prospect of the food truck for uh, James Grubby Q Grubs. Well, I'm in. I'm working with a dude right now, and it's just because 
it all came up like just a couple of weeks ago, but I already had this whole week planned and next whole week is already booked and planned. And I had to cook for some dudes that had to come up from Columbia, South Carolina, Atlanta last week. And I got some stuff. I got company coming from out of town. I ain't seen in four or five years, my family. Mm -hmm. So I just put it off. But what the deal is, is we're going to, it's going to be a, a permanent spot on the four lane in Blairsville. And I'm going to be slinging grub a few three days a week to start with. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to run something a little bit different, man. I, it's because I'm from Louisiana. We do things just a wee bit different, you know? Yeah. But I'm, what I'm going to offer, this is what I'm going to offer, and we'll see how it pans out up here, is uh, two meats and two sides, some pickles and onions and white bread or wheat bread, and that's it, man. It's going to be about a pound or chicken about a quarter. Yeah. So, you know, if you want a size, pink butcher paper, roll it up, plastic silverware, go sit at the picnic table and have you a little nab and enjoy it, man. That's kind of is. Uh, best best kind of food there is, James. Well, that's how I do it. That's how I mean. I I got to keep it simple. I got you know. I'm all about caucus. I say my pockets ain't that deep, man, to go in. But I got a lot of knowledge. I got a lot of sweat equity. I'm still healthy enough to do this. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, I'm betting on myself now, man. I I don't sling health and beauty aids. Next week's my last day over at Ingles, uh <laughs> slinging shampoo and body lotion. You know, but uh, <laughs> well, you know, I know so much about being healthy and beautiful. So the guy, anyway, the, the guy, the guy with no hair, the guy with no I'm hair, tells you what shampoo to use. Yeah. I love. I'm a I sling it. smoke, man. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a put all I can into it. And I take pride in everything I do. And I'm going to tell anybody, just, even when this business, you know it as well. But I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're cooking a brisket, changing a flat tire, putting in a toilet. You should be able to sign your name to it when you get done with it. Absolutely. And be proud of what you did. I when you it. do that, man, you'll, it'll all work out. I love it. James Grubbs from Blairsville, Georgia. They'll never find you up there. He, he, he blew that myth away. They found him and they drug him off that bald brass town, bald mountain, whatever they call it yeah, down there. It's a big one. It's a big one. <laughs> the biggest one in Georgia. And they took yeah. him down to Covington, Georgia, and uh, made him a star. Thank you so much, James. Well, I, I appreciate sure, you having me, man. I uh, hope everybody man, enjoyed the show. I've been dying to do this one. I knew you'd be great. And uh, we'll be in touch. We're going to have some. We'll have some special things with you down the road. Thank you so much. All right, Appreciate my friend, you. you stay safe. Y'all take care. You bet. There he is, James Grubbs from Blairsville, Georgia. What a great, what a great, great guest. Everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I want to remind everybody, uh, don't forget Ken Smith's uh, Faces to Places podcast. Episode three is up now. Find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Um, don't forget November the seventh. Write it down if you're in if you're in the sound of my voice in the southeastern United States. Make it a day trip to Chattanooga. You'll love it. November the seventh. That's a Saturday. We're having smoking barbecue day at the Owls Nest Barbecue Supply and Pro Shop. We'll have free barbecue all day. We've got Robert Vanderipe coming up. Trey and Meg Terry coming up. Sean Cosby from right here in Chattanooga will be there to do a steak demonstration. And my buddy. Big Ed Kaler, a national touring comedian, will be there to do a one o'clock show. This guy is hilarious, and you can come watch him for free. You will love it. Family friendly, good, clean fun on November the 7th at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply Store and Pro Shop. Don't forget, next week I've got Ricer and Steve Dotson in the house. We'll also have Robert Vanderipe who will be here November 7th. He'll be in the house, too, to talk about his visit that he's going to be making November 7th. Everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thank you, James Grubbs. You are fantastic. We'll see you next Thursday right here on the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show.